Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels and at last it feels like spring has sprung so today we're going to be catching up with jobs in the vegetable garden which is brought to you with the support of Mr Fothergill's Cobra Garden and Darlac. Hello welcome to Pots and Trowels well after a very cold April and a cold and wet start to May, the weather has now turned and we're getting some sunshine and warmth, which is the most important thing. We need the warmth to get the seeds and the young plants growing. And since we were in the vegetable garden, which is three weeks ago, things have changed a lot, but it's only this last week that they've really started to come on. So I thought what we would do today is just have a quick catch up with some of the things that we planted a few weeks ago and see how they're doing and do a little bit more seed sowing. But one thing that's just caught my eye is the rhubarb here. And we've started already to pull from this clump of rhubarb, but as you can see, it started to go to seed, it's flowering. Now that is usually caused by a checking growth at some point. Um, it's not uncommon for it to happen. It's probably because they got dry in that very cold, dry weather in April. Um, the temperature shouldn't affect them too much because these are really hardy plants. They originally come from Siberia, but we need to get rid of these. And if we don't, they're just gonna sap the strength and produce thousands of seeds. So literally, you can cut them off, but I prefer to pull them off. It's just a case of getting hold of this thick stalk and, and giving it a good old yank. And you're gonna pull out, there, it usually snaps at a convenient point like that. And there's one more here, just give that a good old pull. Doesn't matter if you get one or two sticks of rhubarb with it, we want to get it below that point. They can be chopped up, added to the compost heap, but they'll rot down. And then what I'll do, I've missed one there, is probably give this a, a foliar feed of some liquid seaweed just to give it a boost and then we can enjoy and pick it even more. The other thing I have done is I've covered over the strawberries with a cloche because they were starting to flower when we were still getting lots of frosts. So I've covered one row over, as you can see there, just to protect them. Um, the rest of them I think will be okay, but the bigger, older plants, we should get a slightly earlier crop there. But let's have a wander down and look at the potatoes. The potatoes were planted about uh, a month ago. I was told years ago by an old gardener the best time to plant new potatoes is the 6th of April um, and then they'll do okay. So I always try and get them in roughly around that date and you can see they come through, they take three to four weeks to push through the soil and here we are now getting on for the middle of May. We've had a little bit of frost damage, those um, early May frost just tinged one or two of the leaves but I, I covered them over to give them a bit of protection and they're going to be fine, they're going to make some strong plants. So what we need to be thinking about now with them growing like this is to earth them up and that's when we form ridges and that encourages more tubers to form. So I just use a little three time cultivator or drag first of all just to loosen the soil between so it's just a case of going through. It makes the job of earthing them up a little bit easier um, so just chop the soil about and then I use what we call a draw hoe. This is a draw hoe um, and it's great for pulling soil or so using it in a chopping action. You can use a hand one or a long handled one. If you haven't got one, a spade or trowel will do the job as well. And it's just a case of pulling some of the soil gently from where we've loosened it over these potato shoots like this. Now. You can cover them completely, but I like to just leave the tops visible. Uh, I'll do this a couple of times as they grow. And, and this time of the year with the warmer weather and the moisture, they will grow quickly, which is what we want. So as you can see, that is forming that ridge shape there like that. But I'm leaving the tops exposed. Obviously, if there's a frost, I'll cover them over. And then when they've grown another few inches, I'll pull up a bit more soil until I get a ridge about a foot high, something like that. And that's them set up then. So that's what we can do with the potatoes. If you're growing them in pots, this is a pot I started earlier. Uh, this has been in the cold greenhouse. So this one's all oh, six, eight weeks old now. So, you know, another month or so we'll be getting new potatoes, but there's still time. So if you've got a few seed potatoes left, then don't throw them away. This is a pink fir apple, this knobbly one here. This is a little early potato. If you've got a few, rather than throw them away, get some pots, 
multi-purpose compost. They need to be about the size of a two gallon bucket like that. Plant them nice and deep in there, keep them watered. They should be outside, they're fine outside at this time of the year now because by the time they come through, hopefully the danger of frosts have gone and you'll get lovely fresh new potatoes in 13, 14 weeks time. While we're on the subject of potatoes, this plot here is the onion bed. Uh, it's already got the shallots in there. We've got the onion sets, which are coming through nicely. Just a row of lettuce, just as a filler. And then the plot there is gonna be for the leeks, which we'll plant out in a few weeks time. But you can probably see here, I'm just having to be careful where I put my feet because we've got the onions just starting to grow. But this bed would have been the potato bed last year. And one or two potatoes are coming through. It's what we call volunteer potatoes. They're growing from a tuber that's left in the soil. I don't want these here because these are gonna grow and crowd out the onions. So what we've got to do is just get rid of them. So it's just using a fork and delve down to get them out. And I'm not gonna add them to the compost bin because they'll carry on growing. So I just need to get rid of these probably in the dustbin. I could put the tops in, but not the roots. So if you've got any of these volunteers coming through, just get rid of them um, and then just tidy the plot through and away you go. So I'm gonna show you a bit of seed sowing now, something you can be doing at the moment. One of my favourite summer vegetables is runner beans. I just love the fresh pods that you get all the way through the summer. And of course you can freeze them and enjoy them all the way through the year. Now, the same old gardener that told me about planting potatoes also used to say the ideal time to sow your runner beans is the 12th of May. So I'm only a day out. The theory behind that being by the time they've germinated, which takes them a couple of weeks and they push through the soil, the danger of frost has gone because these are frost tender. If they get frost on them, it will kill them. And I've seen them already this year where people have risk planting them out early and they've just been frosted so if yours have been damaged it's not too late to sow them in fact you can sow these right into June and they'll still produce a good crop so I'm going to grow this variety here which is called Crusader it's a really really popular one and I'm going to grow it in two ways just to, a bit of an experiment really so I'm going to sow some here into trays and this is how I normally do it to be fair so I'm growing mine at wigwams um, with eight cane so I'm going to plant them in these nine packs I'm just using my free dibber here to make a hole in them and uh, I'm going to put them look at the really plump healthy seeds there so I'm just going to drop a seed into each of these cells like this these will be watered they can be kept outside somewhere sheltered or if you've got a cold frame that's ideal or if you're worried it's too cold just put them on a, a windowsill and they will germinate and then as soon as they come through they need more light outside so their crusader there as a test um, and then I'm going to plant some directly in the garden. These are some French beans that I started a few weeks ago um, and they're almost ready to go out in the garden. But it's not too late to sow lots of vegetables, you know, things like your runner beans, as I've mentioned, you know, courgettes, marrows, squashes, uh, sweet corn likes it when it's warm anyway. So the later you leave that to a certain extent, the better, you know, right the way through May and the French beans. And we can carry on sowing our lettuces and carrots and beetroot and spinach, spring onions. So lots of veg we can be sowing now the ground is moist and warm. And don't forget about the flowers because, you know, there's still loads of time to put in these lovely hardy annuals, things like scabious and clarkia and larkspur and amaranthus there cornflowers all absolutely beautiful and so easy to sow all you do is to rake the ground take out a little shallow drill sprinkle the seed very thinly and they'll pop up in no time at this time of the year and when they're about an inch or so tall just thin them out give them a bit of growing room and you'll get masses of blooms and of course they're great for attracting pollinators and beneficial insects into the garden. As we all know, gardening is great for us all. In fact, this week is National Mental Health Awareness Week, and it's just wonderful to be out with your fingers in the soil. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to plant some runner beans around the canes. So I've put in these two bamboo wigwams, one here, one here. So the ones that I've sown in the tray will be destined for this one. And this one here, is going to have the same seed so it's a true trial both say, sown on the same day within just a few minutes of each other 
And what I'm going to do is to sow two seeds per cane. So I'm just going to make a hole about an inch or so deep. It's a bit like Jack and the Beanstalk and drop one seed in there. Just one either side of the cane. Let's cover them over obviously and one there. So hopefully they will both germinate and if they do I can leave them in or I could thin them out to just one per cane and they will twist the way up there and we'll get some wonderful beans later on in summer. So enjoy your garden, remember it is good for you, it makes you feel great and what a wonderful feeling to have your fingers in this lovely fertile soil. We'll see you soon. Well, thank you for watching. Hope there's lots of tips there and do enjoy being out in the garden and have a good potter around. Next week, we're going to be at Harrogate Spring Essentials, the first garden show of the year. So we'll hopefully see you then. Bye. <laughs>